Hi everyone, welcome to SAMA, a program which invites an expert each week to discuss a topic from their area of expertise. This week we are delighted to have Dr. Marisa Snyder in this week's episode of SAMA to discuss the benefits of essential oils. Many women experience mood swings, unexplained weight gain, horrible PMS and fatigue at some point in their lives. But what causes these conditions? And more importantly, how can a woman heal their hormones? While essential oils are not a universal remedy, they do offer several physiological benefits which can heal and balance. It has been proven that essential oils are effective for many ailments, including stress, energy, and hormone imbalances. So how do you choose the best essential oils? Well, we have Dr. Marisa to help solve the mystery of essential oils. Dr. Marisa is a functional practitioner and the author of seven books, including the number one Amazon bestseller, The Smart Mom's Guide to Essential Oils. She has been featured on Dr. Oz, Fox News, Health, Opera Magazine, Mind Body Green, and many other publications. She is also the host of the Essentially You podcast, designed to empower women to become the CEO of their health. Welcome to our show. It's wonderful to have you with us. Really Thank wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. When did you first discover the healing potential of essential oils? Yes, absolutely. So I, I as a woman, I've had my own hormone issues. And one of the things that happened to me um, is I had a lot of stress um, and that stress ended up really compromising my immune system. Wow. And although I was healing my body um, in doing a lot of things and my hormones were coming back online, my immune system was not. And I was sick um, literally seven to 11 times a year, a year with a wow. cold, flu, strep, kind of a circulation of all of them over and over again. Love I was them. very much the, um, the welcome host for a lot of these environmental threats. And um, I was missing practice. I was missing patience. I was missing my ability to, I mean, when you're that sick all the time, it really is hard to, to live a life where you're doing all the good work in the world. So I was on the phone. A lot of my friends knew I was always sick. And I had one such friend who basically called me up one day and she's like, girl, I am so sick and tired of you being sick and tired all the time. I think I have something for you. And I was like, I will try anything at this point. I'm, I'm so over being sick. And so she sent me um, a series of essential oils, sent me a blend that was an immune system blend. And um, I began using it pretty regularly, pretty much every single day. Um, I was putting it in my um, in my diffusers, I was applying it to the bottom of my feet. I was, I, I felt anything come on. I was gargling with them. I was just, I was on top of it. And it was, I remember it being October of that year. And I knew that the, the winter season was a big season for me for getting sick. I, I was guaranteed I was going to be out of the office for at least two weeks of the season and not for the holidays. And so I, um, I started using them, all the kinds I put them. I really didn't know what I was doing at the time, but I was like, I was committed. And I got through that entire season without a cold and flu. Then I got through another three and a half years without getting sick. So I missed out on 30 colds and flus in that time frame. Wow. And I was sold. I was like, I don't know what is in what, what is in this bottle, but I, I want to know. And so I really began to dig into the research because I was so fascinated. And um, it really opened my world to uh, what the possibility, the healing properties of essential oils. Wonderful. Yeah. Most people don't realize when they get a cold or a flu, after they're over it, their body is still being damaged. It takes a long time for the body to truly recover from a flu. And then you come down, you succumb to another, the next strain, the next flavor that comes along. Yes. So um, you apply the oils topically mm -hmm. to address these conditions. Do you, um, uh, how does it work? 
Yeah. So I, I mean, I did it topically. I did it aromat. I used my diffusers. I did it aromatically. I had them in spray bottles. Um, I even, I was even doing Epsom salt baths with them as well. And I was, and if I felt like I had a little bit of a, any little tickle, I was gargling with them too. And so what initially when essential oils came onto the market, well, when we, be, when we began to use them on the market, I think that they were mostly used for ar ar aromatherapy, aromatic usage. Yes. Um, I think that well before the advent of modern medicine, essential oils were used topically, internally, and aromatically, because they really were our first source of plant-based solutions. It's what we really had before the advent of modern medicine. So I think we used to use essential oils um, in all types of forms. We were using these beautiful, um, volatile aromatic constituents, even in the in the form of a plant, whether you were chewing on peppermint leaves or you were steaming chamomile petals for chamomile tea, we were we were using essential oils from for a long time. Right. Um, so yeah, so how essential oils are are used is they can be used aromatically, where you breathe them in. One of my favorite ways to use them, I use them all the ways, and simply like rolling it over your palm or breathing from the bottle, you literally just breathe them in and it's the fastest way to get them into the body systemically because those aromatic constituents, those, those, those beautiful nanoparticles literally going into the um, nasal passage through, the, through the, the lungs and into the bloodstream very, very quickly. Um, the other way that we use them aromatically is for actually going straight to the brain. Um, our sense of smell is our most powerful sense and it's because it's directly connected to survival. Like we could, right. you always talk about, we could smell fear. Yes. And that's, that's, we can use aromatherapy to, to elicit calming, to boost energy, to address brain fog, like memory, concentration, alertness. We can even regulate hormones by simply breathing in an essential oil because the hypothalamus is actually in the limbic system, the limbic brain, where these oils are first going to. So that's aromatic specifically, lots of great benefits there. That's very interesting. I've known it worked, but I've never had it explained to me in scientific terms how it works. Yeah. So it's a little drop of, oh, wow, well, it's got, it's yeah, amazing. just a, yeah, just a drop. And then topical, which initially, um, when I was recommended this immunity blend, it was really about topical. Like how can I get them into the system on top of me breathing them in or diffusing them in the environment. And so I, I learned topical usage pretty quickly out the gate. And as a practitioner, patients came in with digestive upset. Patients came in with respiratory irritation. Patients came in with a cut or a bruise or sleeplessness or a headache. And topical usage for most of those, those things that I mentioned were the most effective and fast way to use the oils. And it's simply, you take a diluted version of an oil or a blend, and I can share any kind of blend you want. I have them all memorized in my brain. Um, and what, what, what's so great about that is that when you apply that digestive blend to the, digest, to, the, to the gut or the small intestine or the large intestine, you're going to feel a benefit from literally just putting that oil on within a matter of minutes. I cannot tell you how many times somebody at an event or a class or a conference has had a problem and it has come up to me and was like, oh, what Dr. Marie said, do you have a, oh my God, my, I have the worst headache or my stomach is hurting or um, I'm tired or I've got this sore shoulder and I literally just pull out an oil and we roll it over the problem and within a couple of minutes, they, they feel significantly better, if not that, that problem being gone. Wow. And I love that fast acting solution um, that we can easily just, I could pull out of my purse, roll it on somebody, and voila, we, re we have a solution. Wow. Now, Bev Wright was determined this week, she's an online participant, she was determined to be the first person to ask a question, and she is. She's asking, is there any way to make an oil or some sort of protection using tried herbs or whatever? Under the current circumstances, this is what she's talking about the coronavirus. Are there any oils that people can put on topically or can ingest which can protect? 
Yeah, I mean, so that's such a great question. I definitely know a lot of people want to know what we can yeah. do to boost our immune system. And that's what I really want to speak on is it's really about boosting the immune system. And there's a wow. lot of different ways to do that. You know, really good, high quality vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, selenium, making sure that we're sleeping at night making sure that we are decreasing stress levels and that we're really supporting our gut. Um, yes, there are definitely essential oils that play into that, that can help support the immune system, um, help, help to boost the immune system. Oils like um, tea tree oil, oils like frankincense, um, oregano is a great beautiful oil for that. Um, peppermint and lavender are great oils. Eucalyptus is a great oil for boosting the immune system. And so, yes, you can absolutely help to support the body. We don't know a lot about the coronavirus at this moment. It's, it's, it's a wily virus um, and it's moving fast. And so we, we just, there's not enough data to really make any assumptions around what essential oil could help protect us from the coronavirus. So I'm definitely not making any claims in that way, but I do like to support, I mean, I'm all winter season, no matter what type of environmental threat is out there, I am boosting my immune system with essential oils um, every season. Because I've only, you know, we talked about me being sick. Um, that, that journey was a little over eight years ago for me. And I have been sick maybe three times in the last eight years. And that's a lot less than it was way, you know, back in the day, eight years ago. Right. So, and it's, I think it's a really a big testament, not only to good sleep and stress levels being managed, good nutrition, helping to support my gut, good hand washing and hygiene, making sure I'm, you know, making sure I'm handling that. And then also I use essential oils, as you can imagine, many, many times a day. And so by constantly using them, I'm always consistently boosting my immune system. Right. And you apply the oils topically? I think it's a, an effective way to do that is just on the bottom of the feet or the back of the neck, or if, if it's a child on their spine is a great place. Okay. Um, I do love the palms as well. Um, cause these are great meridian energy points. Yes. Um, and it's not invasive. It's so easy to roll oils onto your feet and your palms. So easy to roll oils like, you know, topically onto the skin, but also aromatic. So I have a diffuser running right next to me. That's got a, um, it has got a citrus blend in it and citruses are beautiful immune system boosters they are powerful antioxidants and they smell really, really good and they're energy boosters. And so for me, it's, it's I love that oils have a lot of side benefits. Yes. So a citrus oil not only supports detoxification, it supports a mood support, it supports energy, it helps to boost the immune system, and it really manages a really clean environment inside of your home. So to me, it's a lot of win-wins. So I, I do diffuse a lot of citrus oils on a on a day-to-day -day basis. Natural healing methods have a habit of having several wooden winds without these side effects like death, <laughs> yes. which which other um, methods of healing have. Um, how important is it to have pure, high-grade essential mm -hmm. oils? It's extremely important just as equally as important as it is to have good high quality nutrition um good high quality you know we don't want to we don't want to be consuming foods with a lot of glyphosate or pesticides or herbicides those don't work in our favor you know it creates leaky gut and and, and also a leaky brain so it's really important anything that we put into our bodies that we are using on a therapeutic level that we want to make sure that it's a high, high grade. It's very, very similar to food and supplements and a lot of other natural remedies that are out there. Essential oils are, they can very, they can very much vary in quality. And so I always tell people it can be very challenging to tell on a shelf, which essential oil on that shelf is good, a good quality and which essential oil on that shelf is a bad quality. Mm -hmm. And just like we do our due diligence when it comes to supplementation or practitioners or even medication for that matter, it's as important to do the research on your oils as well. So when you go and research an essential oil company, what you're looking for are two very clear things. One, where are these oils harvested? Are they disclosing any information about where their oils come from? Because every one of these little essential oil bottles, these are, these are if, I mean, we're talking about 50, 50 pounds to 100 pounds, 
of a particular substance, a, a plant-based substance, whether it's jasmine petals or rose petals or it's lemons and oranges or lavender. It's just really important to know that all, that's plant material that we are using to make these beautiful essential oils. So one, do they disclose anywhere if any, places that they actually harvest. Do they talk about their growers? Do they have sustainability relationships with, with their growers around the world? And then what level of purification testing do they undergo? Are they looking at chirality testing? Are they looking for gas chromatography, mass spectrometry? Are they looking for isotope testing? Are they doing microbial testing? You know, all of these are super important tests and some companies go above and beyond so it's important to look and see. And if a company is gonna spend the kind of money to do that level of testing, they have to have big laboratories to do this, then you know that you're working with a high quality essential oil. Right. I see that you've got the same brand as me now. We won't mention the brand, but thank you, doTERRA. This is a good product that you make. <laughs> now, one of the um, main topics of today is yes. hormone imbalances. Yes. We haven't really talked about that. Now, how, how can something that you put on your skin um, um, balance your hormones? Such a great question. It's kind of like nutrition. You know, we know that nutrition isn't, I like to use nutrition. It's one thing, it's something that we can all connect to and relate to. We have to eat nutrition. We have to eat food every day. And we know that nutrition can help to balance our hormones, but they're not necessarily hormones unless we're working with a high, quali high quantity of phytoestrogens, right? So same kind of concept is essential oils are not actually hormones. You know, they, they, they don't have that ability to become estrogen or DHEA or progesterone or testosterone, but we do know that they can connect in with these chemical messengers. They can help support the liver. They can absolutely help to support and heal the gut. And they can go in to like, a, by breathing them in, make powerful and profound changes in our stress response system. I think one of the biggest root causes for why we have a hormonal imbalance today is going to be a, per a perceived stress issue, that we're always in a state of constant stress. And if we can lower that level of stress, we know that we can, sh we can slow down the adverse cascade of hormones being released over time on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm just going to give a slight little example. So let's say the average adult goes into a state of chronic perceived stress 20 to 30 times a day. And I would, I would actually argue that some women are in a state of perceived stress more than that. And oftentimes we don't even know it. Well, when we're in a state of perceived stress, our brain doesn't differentiate the difference between us in an emergency and us just perceiving an emergency. Right. Um, it's, a, it's confusing to the brain and the brain, its number one job is survival and protection. And so it just is like, you know what, let's just be, let's just be safe. Let's just get the body into a response system just in case this is an actual emergency. And so what happens is we, we relay information, um, corticosteroids to the adrenal glands and the adrenal glands then release more steroids in the form of adrenaline, epinephrine and cortisol. And cortisol is a sustained hormone. But what people don't realize is that cortisol, it co-elevates other hormones like insulin and thyroid hormones. And it can take away from our reproductive hormones because when you're in a state of survival, the last thing that you need to do is procreate, make babies, and digest food. So you're going to find that cortisol actually creates massive disruption in the system and, and unfortunately co-elevates very important metabolic hormones, lowering our metabolic resistance and resilience. And so by helping to support us like go straight to it's kind of like an adaptogen like holy basil or ashwagandha or rhodiola if we can go straight to the source of the hpa the hypothalamic pituitary axis we can actually regulate the way that our hormone systems are responding um, and we can change the way that we respond to a stressful situation. So that's one of many ways in which we can regulate the, our entire hormone system, our endocrine system, just by smelling and breathing in calming essential oils like lavender, clary sage, cedarwood, bergamot, and frankincense. Interesting. And clary sage has got another function too with the uterus. If you rub it on your tummy, it can... Yes, it does. So clary sage does have some, some hormone support um, 
modalities of hormone support um, benefits. Um, it can help with hot flashes. Um, clary sage can help with, um, with cramp, with cramping. Um, and clary sage can also help with sleep and mood swings. And the reason for that is clary sage, also lavender, they're both, um, they're both natural allergesic. So they're natural pain relievers. So they can actually help to soothe muscle cramps, but also they can lower prostaglandins which is an uh, increase in prostaglandins is why we're having those uterine contractions to begin with. Right. So they work dually in helping to address some of those PMS or menstrual um, symptoms that we can experience. There's a few questions come through. Um, yeah. Barbara Solano, um, she said she knows somebody that has dementia. Uh, they use colloidal silver with frankincense in their nebulizer. Um, She's asking, is there any other oil that may help this person? Frankincense is a beautiful neurological support oil. So I'm so grateful to hear you're using it. Other wood oils can also play a pretty big role. Um, the wood oils, because it, it takes a little bit to get, it takes a lot of product to make an essential oil. Um, you're going to find that the wood oils are on the pricier side, but they're very much worth it. The other two oils I would recommend are going to be vetiver. Um, that is a root that comes out of Haiti. And then the last, the other one is going to be sandalwood. And either Hawaiian sandalwood or regular sandalwood are both appropriate and are beneficial. Isn't sandalwood a beautiful oil for smelling as well? I mean, it is. It's beautiful. Like it is one of my favorite, favorite oils. It's great for meditation. It's great for mindfulness. It's great for calming the mind. It's phenomenal for sleep. Both of those oils are great for sleep, but also depending on what's going on with the uh, person's neurochemistry, they're great for alertness. They're great for, for literally calming that mental chatter. Um, and they're great for boosting memory and focus and concentration. Right. Um, for someone that's um, post menopause or menopause or they're going through mm -hmm. the stage, um, the other oils that you mentioned before, I'm just going through some of the questions that was asked whilst we're talking about um, um, about uh, hormones. Mm -hmm. uh, those hormones you mentioned before, would that be okay for someone who's going through menopause or is there any specific one that would be even better for? Absolutely. Such a great question. So in menopause, we, we do have a decrease in our reproductive hormones because lucky for us, we don't necessarily need to take that energy to set the tone every month to get ready for a potential pregnancy. So yeah. in a lot of ways, it's a win. Yeah. Um, and so we, we free up that energy, but we still have, we still have beta receptors for estrogen and progesterone. Um, that, and we also have the adrenals kind of doing their job there on that front. But the hormones that I'm most concerned about when it comes to menopause are going to be insulin, thyroid hormones, cortisol, leptin, and ghrelin. You know, those are the, going to be the hormones that I'm most, most concerned about. Metabolic focused, brain driven hormones that are going to help support us. And there are great essential oils for that. Now, when it comes to hot flashes, I do love peppermint, clary sage, and lavender. I love it in a little spritzer. And I have a lot of these recipes inside of my essential oil hormone book. Um, I love, so I love that for hot flashes. But really, my, my bigger concern for women in menopause is focusing on brain health. It's focusing on metabolism and ensuring that we're supporting their gut and their liver. And I definitely have oils to support that as well. Great. Uh, Max Lloyd Farah asks, what's the best way to dilute essential oils? That's a great question. And I think what she's asking is like maybe the percentage of dilution. So I'll grab, um, so I love you guys, I can, you can see I love the rollers. And the reason why I love roller blends, something like this or like this one, um, the reason why I love roller blends is that they're pre-diluted and they are instantly ready to use. You have to think about diluting essential oils. So if you go to my house, you're going to see rollers everywhere. So I like, I like easy. I like effectiveness. I like easy. I like on the go solutions. So there are two teaspoons or 10 mils inside of this bottle right here, this little 10 mil roller bottle. And on average, I recommend doing anywhere between 10 to 20 drops of an essential oil, depending on the issue and depending on how potent you need the blend to be, right. 10 on the lower side, 20 on the higher side. Like for instance, if I had a really, really sore knee or a sore leg, I would definitely step up my blend to 20 drops. 
But if it was just everyday usage for the immune system, I would keep it around 10 drops. So it just really depends. If I had really severe menstrual cramps or really severe stomach aches, I would definitely have a higher concentration. So I really want the oils to go and do what they need to do very quickly. So 10 to 12, 10 to 20 drops in a roller, and then you top it off with whatever carrier oil you prefer. Jehovah oil, grapeseed oil, avocado oil, um, coconut oil, fractionated coconut oil. You picked that one up earlier, the fractionated coconut oil. Any of those carrier oils are wonderful and effective, and um, it just allows for better absorption, dilution, so there's no particular, there's no, there's a gr less greater chance of any type of irritation, and it allows, again, oils are lipophilic. We really want the oils to absorb into the tissue, and we just do a better job of that when we have it in a carrier oil. It's quite remarkable when you use a high quality oil like that Daterra band, which we promised not to mention. It, it disappears on your skin. You can rub it, and then whereas a normal oil, you'd normally think it would just sit there forever in a day, but the oil does disappear. It gets absorbed by the skin so readily if it's a good grade oil. Yeah, it is exactly. You, you can tell that it's a pure, it's pure essential oil mm -hmm. and it doesn't have any adulterated because any, there's a lot of different types of adulterants that we can put in oils. One of those adulterants is a carrier oil and some of some oils will be very marked that they are already have a carrier oil, oils that are already made for children um, or, you know, and it's very clear, but if you just pick up a tea tree oil or a lemon oil or a eucalyptus oil, it'll quickly absorb in the tissue if it's a high quality oil. Because again, these aren't necessarily oils. They're not oils. This is volatile chemical constituents from a plant source that works with our biochemistry literally on a cellular level. And so when our bodies are, are receptive to experiencing those benefits, we, we really take them on pretty quickly. Right. Now, um, the other question that was asked, oh, where did it go? Oh my goodness, some questions disappeared. How, how is it even possible? But the, I know what the question was. Um, I'll, I'll phrase the question in a different way though. What oils can be and what oils can't be ingested? Hmm. Oh, that is a great question. There is a long list of oils that can be ingested, and there is a decent list of oils that can't be ingested as well. Um, you know, and I can, I'll speak to this as well, that there are some people, and maybe some of you are listening right now, who are just never on the fence of in, internally consuming oils, and that is absolutely okay. You don't ever have to internally use oils. You could always just use topical and aromatic. And there's a lot of people who feel very strongly about that. Mm -hmm. With that said, I also know people that use oils internally. They put them in their, their um, soups and they put them in their smoothies and they take them for prop, like anxiousness or they take them for blood sugar levels. And so, you know, I can't list all of the oils in front of me, but let's just say, let's just give a couple. Um, so like peppermint, lavender, frankincense, um, another, any citruses are great. Cardamom, any of the any of the, the herbs like thyme, oregano, marjoram, those are all great because they literally came from herb sources. Um, other flowers are as well. But oils like eucalyptus, uh, tea tree is definitely on the fence there. Eucalyptus, tea tree, um, let's see what else is, definitely wintergreen, camphor, those are definitely no-nos. And a good, usually a blend will say, or an oil will say, do not ingest. Okay. Now, if you're working with a high quality company and they do have oils that are ingestible, they will also be very clear about the oils that are not ingestible. Okay, and oregano is okay ingestible? Oregano, yeah, oregano is okay, cinnamon is okay, cassia is okay. Yes, okay. again, because those are all herb, herbal oils. We, we consume those as spices already. Yeah. Um, you know, my husband, I remember many years ago, my husband was making this really amazing spaghetti sauce that we had learned in Italy. And he thought, that he could just put a drop of oregano inside of our spaghetti oh, sauce. Goodness. Oh my goodness. We had to throw all of it away because it was so potent. So just being mindful, you know, these, especially when it comes to the herbs, the cinnamons, the cassia, the, the thyme, the rosemaries, all phenomenal for the immune system, by the way. And no wonder that we've been using these herbs, cilantro, basil, marjoram, for many, many years um, therapeutically, all kinds of benefits. I mean, you think about um, rosemary on its own right 
the 1-8-cinolol literally boosts brain function so instantaneously. Um, so it's just, when we're talking about those types of herbal oils that have so many side benefits, so many cellular antioxidant, gut boosting benefits, we just have to be mindful that they're extremely potent. We're talking about pounds and pounds and pounds of cilantro and thyme and oregano. And you think about how much of that herb you actually use in your cooking. You don't, you're not dumping you know, piles of cilantro into your soup, you know, yeah. and you wouldn't do that with the oil. So it's just really about being mindful about the, about how, how much you use. I always recommend using like a little toothpick pick and then swirling that into a soup or into a saute, something like that. Well, that's a small amount for sure. Um, Nola Jacob asks the question, are there any essential oils to help alleviate panic attacks? Hmm. There are, so there are essential oils that are very, very, very calming and very, very relaxing. I am a full confession. I, I have really bad flight anxiety and I fly a lot. And so I use a lot of essential oils instead of any other, other possible recommendation. Um, my go-to oils for anxiousness and feeling that, that feeling of panic are going to be lavender. They're gonna be vetiver, I love vetiver. For, for that. I love copaiba, which is out of Brazil. It's a beautiful endocannabinoid, very, very fat, powerful and effective. Um, sandalwood is another one that I really love as well. Um, I'm trying to think about what other ones I, I think. Um, um, Roman yeah. chamomile is a good one. I love Roman chamomile. And I mean, those are, those are my big, big five. Cedarwood is great as well. And that's a beautiful oil. So those would be kind of my top five, top six. Uh, and then if you could take one or two of these, make it into a blend and, um, and try and see what works for you. Right. Cedarwood seems to make its way into all your recipes. <laughs> I love, you know, I love cedarwood because cedarwood is so grounding. And as a wood oil, it's very, very affordable opposed to some of the other wood oils I've mentioned. They can be a little bit more on the pricier side. I, when it comes to your health, I think it's all worth it, but I always like to be mindful about anyone who is concerned about cost. Yeah. Right. Right. Just going through the questions, there's mm -hmm. been two Q&As. Uh, mm. okay, the I'll... other oil I love, just I just want to mention, is magnolia oil or, um, oh. or rose oil. Like those, those, any florals are going to really help you out. Right. So you can actually use an essential oil as a perfume, effectively. Yes. Because yes, you can. Beautiful. Yeah, I, um, I usually combine. So my perfume is um, usually a combination of rose and jasmine. So I, I and that's, we you know, I love so much about those two, um, those two florals is they have a very, very, very high um, energetic capacity. And they are very intoxicating. And so, and I have a lot of hair. So the oils get into my hair too. Oh, I have to and so. Yeah, you have that problem as well. Um, so I have a lot of friends and family people in my life who love to hug me um, because they can smell the jasmine and rose. I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> and so those are my, if you ever meet, if we ever meet, that's usually what I'm wearing is jasmine and rose. You know, jasmine is the oil of self-confidence. Rose has just a beautiful energetic capacity for healing on a cellular level. <coughs> they both are very calming. They're both very beautiful. Um, and, I, and I just I just cherish both of those oils so much. Are there any oils that are good for your metabolism to get to kickstart your metabolism? <clears throat> Absolutely. So oils to kickstart your metabolism are going to be cinnamon because of blood sugar level regulation. Um, cinnamon, cassia because cassia and cinnamon are very similar. So cassia is a great one. Any of the citrus oils. So I love grapefruit. A gra grapefruit is great for moving lymph. Grapefruit is great for, um, for curbing cravings, um, and grapefruit is great for supporting the liver as well. And we know that metabolism is happening in the liver too, right? We're metabolizing uh, lipids and carbohydrates. Um, you know, I always say that we, a metabolism issue is a liver issue always before it's a bigger systemic issue first. So I love grapefruit for boosting, um, boosting our metabolism, but also supporting our liver. Ginger is metabolically, um, it's a, a metabolically warming oil. So ginger is a great oil along with cinnamon. 
It's also great for digestive support and helping to support peristalsis in the digestive system. And then peppermint. Peppermint is a great, great metabolic booster, energy booster, brain fog booster, and it's great for curbing cravings. So those are, would be my, my, my top oils for boosting metabolism. Right, as I was about to ask about cravings, because that's a, a problem for today. There's high sugar foods that are being consumed. Absolutely. And once you have them, you, you feel hungry afterwards, you don't feel fulfilled. You're, you're saying that taking, uh, applying these essential oils can reduce the cravings that you get. Yes, yeah, so there was a wonderful article by Dr., a research study done by Dr. Alan Hirsch, I believe it's in the Journal of Neurology, and he was looking at essential oils for reducing cravings. And the oil that took first prize in this study was peppermint essential oil. And it has to do with the menthol content. And simply breathing in peppermint essential oil changes the, the chemistry of the brain because let's you know what, what cravings really are is cravings are an unmet need. Cravings are due to you being exhausted. Cravings are due to energy burnout, emotional burnout. They're due to stress. They're due to self-soothing. They're rarely, I mean, your, your liver and your gut never wanted the cupcake. They it never, never wanted the chocolate chip cookie. It just takes so much energy to have to break those things down. And it really spikes our insulin levels. It's, it's never a good thing by a lot, like metabolically, it doesn't really work in our favor. So these cravings aren't because the body is needing, needing that level of, of, of sustenance. That's not the case. Mm. And so and I always want people to have a tool in their toolbox, in their pocket, in their purse, that when in that moment, in that emergency moment where that craving arises, kind of smacks us upside the head, it's important to have a tool that we can use, that we can breathe in, that allows us to circumvent that moment and eradicate that craving um, very, very quickly. Right, so buy lots of peppermints. <laughs> no. you don't need a lot of peppermint it's just you know it's you could have a little i have a roller a peppermint roller made up just right. roll it over my palms take three to five deep belly breaths and if it was if it was energy if it was brain fog if it was emotional an emotional need peppermint actually manages those needs too so it's like a you know a, not even a two for one it's like a five for one um, when you breathe in peppermint oil if you have young children that are excitable, what oil would you use? Such a great question. You know, we, we definitely are living in a time where we are, we're dealing with um, children that are feeling more excitable. Always I wanna recommend getting to the root cause of what's going on, whether it is a environmental issue or it is a toxic issue or it's a gut issue or a combination of all of those. I think working on at the root cause level is always a great idea. But in the interim, if we're looking for a solution to help manage our child's focus and concentration, it's going to be, you know, a lot of these oils have come up before, but frankincense, vetiver, spearmint or mint, um, rosemary, uh, patchouli is a great one as well. Lavender is a great one. Even basil is phenomenal. So I love any, any combination of those are great, um, especially when you're using an herb like basil and rosemary. Right. Now, um, Barbara Solano's made a comment and it's, it's seated a question, even though it wasn't a question. Her comment was that people should be careful with using essential oils too much. Um, they, are, they can be almost regarded like a medicine and can throw the body functions off balance. Now, um, in your experience, are there some oils that are best to use in very small quantities and take great care? I think, I think all oils should be used in small quantities. You know, our body has to metabolize these chemical constituents, like they have to metabolize everything else. And we can, we can usually metabolize essential oil chemical constituents within two to two to three to four hours. Uh, So I say that if someone's dealing with, you know, with, with, they're not, they're under the weather and they, and they want to feel better. I recommend using essential oils, not a lot at once but using a little bit throughout the day. Um, And same thing with, you know, oils for sleep. I don't recommend using 20 different oils at one time. Um, I think being very, very targeted is a great idea. But if you're choosing between an essential oil and another option, I think you're definitely in the safer route by using an essential oil first before you go into that other route. But always, I mean, that's the reason why I love the, I love 
talking about diluting and having pre-diluted oils is that if they're pre-diluted and you're just, you know, it's one swipe over the palms, you breathe it in, mm -hmm. then, um, then I think it's very, very helpful. If you know that you are prone to a lot of chronic stress, um, I recommend using oils on the hour for that, those stress levels. Because I'll tell you what, if, if you're, that chronic stress continues to accumulate, we're talking about autoimmunity, we're talking about cancer, we're talking about very, very severe chronic conditions, mm -hmm. and you using an oil on the hour is significantly safer than you having to deal with chronic stress levels consistently day in and day out. Now you are probably like ourselves here with cupboards full of oils, literally full. Is there a shelf life for these oils? Mm. It really, such a great question. It really, really depends on the essential oil itself. So some oils, absolutely. Citrus oils are cold pressed. They're not uh, distilled. Um, steam distilled as other oils are and because they're cold pressed they will actually go bad quicker okay. usually a citrus essential oil has about a two-year shelf life and again some oils you get your hands on and they're already rancid you could buy oils off the shelf rancid you have to be really really mindful and you can tell i mean use your your you can smell essential oils and if they don't smell like the plant itself if it smells alcoholy or it smells rancidy, or it smells, it just smells chemically, then most likely that oil isn't, isn't either, it wasn't produced properly, probably isn't gonna have the benefits you're looking for. So when I smell a wild orange or tangerine essential oil, it smells like tangerine. You know, I, I wanna make sure, it doesn't smell like alcohol, you know, some type of chemical thing that I'm using. So it's important that, so for our citruses, use them quickly, you know, two years shelf life. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you've got your very viscous, um, very, very thick wood oils, oils like frankincense, myrrh, sandalwood, vetiver, um, even, even oils like, I'm trying to think of another oil, that copaiba. These are oils that will last longer because they, they actually get better with age. So I would say that a shelf life for those oils, really safe, safe shelf life are gonna be five years, but I do know that people have used them and their benefits for up to seven years. And so it just, again, it depends on the quality, it depends on the oil, and it depends on, um, it depends on how, how well you treat it. Like you don't keep the cap open, you always, you always put the cap, you don't put your fingers on the, on the little orifice reducer, something to be mindful of. But I would say a safe, safe, safe number is probably three years. Across the board, if you're just like, I, I need to use these oils within three years. Okay. Um, what oil do you always run out of? Which is uh, the way of asking, which one is your immediate go-to? So citruses. We go through citruses every single month. We go through <laughs> bottles of citrus oils. So our citrus oils never make it to two years. They don't even make it to two months. We buy, we probably go through three or four bottles of citrus. I would say two to three bottles of citrus oil every month. Um, we, we diffuse them a lot. Yes, um, a lot we, of orange it fills up a room, doesn't it? Yes, it? it does. We use them in our green cleaning products. We use them in our personal care products. We use them as just, you know, we use them everywhere. We use them in our laundry. So our citrus oils are used all over the place. And so we use them as a lot of natural options instead of, um, instead of synthetic cleaning products, instead of synthetic personal care products. Um, and we do love, we just diffuse a lot of citruses in the house. If someone has acne, how can, how can essential oils help? And what oils you know, do you use? Absolutely, such a great question. I, you know, again, lending to where is this acne coming from? Is it PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome? Is it a gut issue? Is it your, your liver is taxed and it's looking for a way to manage the toxic load in the body? So again, getting to the root cause of where that acne may come from is super, super important. With that said, I love to spot check um, any type of acne, any little blemish that comes up with tea tree oil. I use a diluted tea tree oil with a Jehovah oil. Um, and we, we have, a, I've had in the recommendation, lots of patients use that over the years. Tea tree oil is a great first option. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Your answer was quicker than I thought. But there's other conditions as well, such as um, if someone has, a headache, mm. what, what would you suggest? 
And Absolutely. How, and there's a lot of different types of, of head tension and headaches. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, you know, there's a lot of different ways in which we can work on them. So if it's a cervicogenic headache, let's say it's coming from tension mm -hmm. in your neck. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have a lot of tension in their neck and their shoulders. Uh, you, you, you know, you touch somebody's neck and it's just like, oh, it's just, you can feel it's angry. And so I love oils that um, are great for just releasing muscle tension. Wintergreen is a go-getter when it comes to releasing, um, uh, releasing muscle tension. Lavender is a great one. Um, peppermint is a phenomenal, I mean, even peppermint on its own by itself is great. And then if you're working on really releasing any type of tight, tight, angry muscles, basil, I, basil is like a muscle melter. It'll just literally like massage therapists use basil all of the time when they're dealing with a really tight muscle knot. That's a great, great oil. So if you know that you're, if you're having a, a severe tension headache, I love, love basil. Frankincense is a great oil for helping to support tension and, and any type of, 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 of pain that you're dealing with. It reduces, it's great for inflammation. And then my other good go-to oil is going to be, besides peppermint, spearmint. And the other one is going to be like copaiba. I do love copaiba as well. Great. Um, scar reduction. Any oils that can help there? Absolutely. So great, great oils also for pigment, like um, pigmentation, scars. Frankincense is up to bat, number one there. Myrrh is phenomenal. So myrrh, to, myrrh essential oil is great. Rose essential oil is really, really beautiful as well. Those are my top three oils for reducing any type of blemish or scars. <coughs> I'll do, some talk, I'll do some talking for a while. It's interesting that you measure that frankincense and myrrh always seem to go together because <laughs> they're mentioned in the Bible as gifts from the, uh, um, from the shepherds. It's, it's, um, now they are extremely powerful oils. They've, they can do so many things. I mean, there's a reason why they were, they were valued as much as gold back, um, back then in the <laughs> biblical times. They were used as powerful plant-based medicine back then. They continue to be very, very powerful um, in their effectiveness today, especially in a lot of parts of the world. You know, a lot of parts of the world will use essential oils first before other remedies. America isn't that way. And so when we look at the landscape of the world in general, we look at Europe, we look at Australia, we look at China, we look at the Middle East. We're going to oh, see that New we're Zealand. <laughs> or New Zealand. Yes, New yeah, Zealand too. New Zealand. Yeah, I can. Yes, absolutely New Zealand. I, I, you've, you've hurt my feelings, but you can carry it. <laughs> New Zealand, absolutely. That we are, we use a lot of herbal um, chemical, um, herbal constituents, herbal remedies. We use right. nutrition, and then we use essential oils before we actually go to a a, a, a synthetic solution. So it's it just, I don't know how that happened for us in the U.S., but it's yeah. where we're at. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, well, people kind of know, but they're too scared to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But it is unfortunate because our bodies are not synthetic. Our no, bodies are natural. So it, it kind of makes sense to put a like substance on or in your body, which is also natural. Mm -hmm. Oh, and or that a substance that, you know, I am I am very much convinced that plants were put on this earth to heal us, to nourish us, to support us on a biochemical level. And we see that proof every single day, whether it's the, the kale smoothie you made or the arugula salad, or it is the roasted vegetables that you had, or it's the beautiful adaptogenic herbs that you're taking, or it is the essential oils that you're using. You know, we think about all the things that are truly healing for the body. It yeah. usually comes in a plant form. And to think that we could make, I mean, and, and not to say that there isn't a place for modern medicine, but, you know, to think that we, we can rely solely on synthetics that our bodies don't always recognize and surely don't always know what to do without yeah. side effects, um, I think is, it can be very, can, can get to the extent of irresponsibility. Like we've got to have other options too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, can people make any essential oils themselves? Can people, yeah, absolutely. Well, can people ma make essential oils? Like, not, They're not, definitely, oh, yeah. oh. From, from the raw, from the, like, you know, grind something up or. 
I mean, it's possible. I mean, I was a, I was a biochemist before I was a practitioner. So, you know, oh. chemistry has always been a fascination of mine. Um, but, you know, I, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy to distill, you know, a bunch of plant material into an essential oil. And so it's always, it's nice that we have, you know, reliable companies, um, trustworthy, high integrity companies that are doing the work, doing that for us. Um, but yes, I mean, I'm, there are, there are, you know, little distilleries that you can create and make okay. um, to make your essential oils. It just, there's a lot of science that goes into getting it right. And okay. so, you know, it is not, it's not an easy process by any, by any means. Every single oil is, it needs to be distilled a little bit differently, yes. treated a little bit differently. So mm -hmm. a lot of care and consideration goes into, like how we would distill a Lang Lang is not how we would distill sandalwood. And how we distill tea tree oil is not how we would ever distill frankincense. And so we think about that and, and it's, it's just a very complicated and it's, you know, it's the, the combination of the art and science that come together and so many researchers and botanists and, you know, are on the ground aromatherapists who are, who are trying to create like a really great product. Um, but it requires a lot of, a lot of heads, a lot of thinking, thinking minds to come together to make such a beautiful essential oil. Right. Sometimes it's very, it's quite remarkable just how strong some of the essential oils smell. The grapefruit oil, for example, that's wow. It just knocks my socks off every time I, I smell it. I mean, I love grapefruit. It's one of my favorite fruits. And this is like my favorite fruit in concentrated form, super concentrated form. But yeah. never really Grapefruit's gorgeous. Sure. Yeah, it is. It's strong. It's fresh. It's herbaceous. Um, it is cleansing. It's purifying. Um, you know, it's got its own distinctiveness to it. You know, it doesn't smell like tangerine. It doesn't smell like a mandarin. It smells like a superpower grapefruit. Um, and that's how you can really tell of the purity too, is when you're working with a grapefruit oil, it kind of knocks you off your feet. That really smells like you've pilled like 10 grapefruits, right? That you've been peeling grapefruits. That's how a grapefruit oil should smell for sure. Right. Now, um, Barbara Solano just had a very brief conversation with me. She's saying that she's healed herself by uh, giving up fruit and vegetables. That's kind of the opposite of what we've been trying to tell other people. But she's, I guess, gone uh, carnivorous or predominantly carnivorous because uh, vegetables contain herbicides and things. Now, I know it's not quite the same thing, but every time I like strawberries, I'd, I'd um, get the strawberries ready, I'd wash them, then I'd put one drop of lemon essential oil in the water and, and swash it up again. And um, as well as getting rid of any of the, you know, killing the microbes that are on the strawberries, it gives it a taste. And I don't think I can enjoy strawberries without a little tiny bit of lemon now. <laughs> lemon is such a great essential oil for removing other impurities. So we, yeah. we do a, we wash all of our vegetables um, and I, I am a big, if you look at any like healing program for an autoimmune condition or cancer or, you know, severe in inflammation, you're going to find that phytonutrients and minerals and vitamins that come from plants are super necessary. Yeah. You got to be really mindful about the pesticides and herbicides. I totally understand that, but we, they, we absolutely need plants to survive. You know, I have helped so many people, um, support their, their, inflammatory journeys or cancer journeys with plants. And so Barbara and I are just going to have to disagree on this. I am a researcher <laughs> yeah, first and foremost, see. and I just don't agree with Barbara at all. No, um, and that's going, totally okay. Barbara's going pretty strong there, but no, we get yeah. the point, Barbara. Another, another time because, um, yeah, that's all right. Um, yeah. So with that, with that said, um, I love, a, I love lemon essential oil as a, as a way to rinse and clean our, our fruits and vegetables. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, now we're getting close to the end of the summer. I'd like you yeah. to mention your your favorite essential oils. What's the what's the what are the few that you would grab if you had to rush out in a hurry? So there's a couple, yeah, a couple different categories there. So for like every day, like if I was leaving on a trip to Europe right now, um, I would be taking I would take peppermint, yes. I would take tea tree, yes. I would take any citruses, probably two citruses because I do love citruses. I would take frankincense, I would take copaiba. I would take, if I didn't say lavender already, definitely lavender. Um, I would take oregano, um, always good to have. Um, I would take clary sage, um, and I would take either 
like a Roman chamomile or a cedar wood or a bergamot, something really calming and relaxing. So I wanted to cover my bases. I want immune system support. I want digestive support. I want respiratory support. I want cut scrapes, bug bites, that kind of support. And then I want emotional stress mood support as well. So that would be if I was taking off on a plane to Europe right now or to New York City, um, those are the oils that I would take with me. Um, otherwise, any, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's really what I'm in the mood for, or what I need support for that day, and that, that list can very much vary. Now, people will be watching this video that will be thinking, gosh, I want to get more information. Where yeah. can people find you? The best of my, my books, which we talked a little bit about, The Smart Mom's Guide to Essential Oils and The Essential Oil Hormone Solution are on Amazon. Um, and easy to grab, very inexpensive to grab. Um, those are going to be the best ones. This is one of them right here, The Little Smart Mom's Guide. Yeah, hold, and it then still, I've got, hold it still so I can yeah. see it. Yes, yes, yes. So this is The <laughs> Essential Oil Hormone Solution. Okay. And then I'll grab The Smart Mom's Guide as well. And this is The Smart Mom's Guide. And so these, the, between the two books, there's probably 200 plus recipes that people can begin to use. Very simple, very easy. No guesswork. It's all done for you. Outside of me coming over to your house and making the blends for you, it's all there for you. So those are the books I'd recommend. Um, my podcast is called Essentially You. Um, and it's all about, it really focuses on women's hormone health. And then my website is drmarisa.com. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Marisa, thank you so much for coming on to our show. We've, we've learned a terrific lot of, um, lot of uh, new information about essential oils and uh, their usage. They really are essential, aren't they? <laughs> they absolutely are. They, they definitely are essential for plants. Um, and they are, they are, we are finding they are extremely essential and very beneficial for us as human beings. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on to our show. Thank you so much for having me. Week. You take care. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye.